from Mission Control in Houston and the International Space Station Flight Control Room here at the Johnson Space Center as we begin our coverage tonight of the return home of three of the residents of the orbital outpost. At this hour, NASA astronaut Kate Rubens and Russian cosmonauts Sergei Ryzhikov, who has served as commander of the station during Expedition 64, and Sergei Kudzverchkov are minutes away from saying farewell to their crewmates on the complex and entering their Soyuz MS-17 spacecraft that carried them to the International Space Station back on October 14th last year. Ryzhikov has just completed the procedures to place the Soyuz on autonomous power. This comes about 25 minutes or so before we expect the hatches to close between the station's Poisk module and the Soyuz vehicle with Rubens, Ryzhikov, and Kudzverchkov aboard. That trio is heading home tonight for a parachute-assisted landing in a remote area of Kazakhstan, southeast of the town of Jezkazgan, to wrap up a 185-day mission spanning 78.4 million miles and 2,960 orbits of the Earth. We'll dive into their timeline of events and all of the preparations and logistics involved in their undocking from the station and entry and landing back on the planet in a moment. It certainly has been a non-stop eventful six months on orbit for these three crew members. When she lands back on Earth a little over seven hours from now, Rubens will have accrued 300 days in space on her two flights, putting her fourth for the most days in space by an American female astronaut behind Peggy Whitson, Christina Cook, and Sonny Williams. Ryzhikov will have totaled 358 days in space on his two flights, and Kudzverchkov is completing his first flight with 185 days on his resume. This crew saw the arrival of five visiting vehicles and the departure of four visiting vehicles. Rubens herself conducted a pair of spacewalks during her time on orbit for a total of four spacewalks in her career. Ryzhikov and Kudzverchkov conducted a single spacewalk together back in November, just five weeks after arriving on board. Here in Mission Control, the Orbit 3 team of flight controllers is on duty this Friday evening, led by Flight Director Marcos Flores, along with astronaut Zena Cardman, who is the Spacecraft Communicator, or CAPCOM, talking with the other crew members on the station. This team here in Mission Control is working with its Russian counterparts across the ocean at the Russian Mission Control Center in the town of Karolyov on the outside on the outskirts of Moscow, who are controlling tonight's landing operations, along with members of Rosaviatsa, the Russian Civilian Search and Recovery Forces, who are stationed in Kazakhstan at this hour, along with embedded NASA personnel to greet the crew after they land. After Rubens, Ryzhikov, and Kudzverchkov undock their Soyuz MS-17 vehicle from the station, it will mark the official end to Expedition 64 and the official start of Expedition 65 with the International Space Station now under the command of NASA astronaut Shannon Walker, the third woman to command the orbiting laboratory, etching her name into the history books behind NASA astronauts Peggy Whitson, who commanded the station twice, and Sonny Williams. Yesterday was Shannon Walker's day in the spotlight as she took over station command from Ryzhikov. Let's take a quick look back at yesterday's Expedition 64-65 change of command ceremony. Uh, behind our shoulders, uh, six months of being on board the station. It was amazing time and uh, it was unforgettable uh, 
many unforgettable events during our increment we had. And uh, now time to hand over uh, commanding from station uh, from me to Shannon. And I'm so glad to do it because I know Shannon from uh, all <laughs> For multiple years, we uh, trained together uh, in winter survival and water survival, and now we flying uh, together on board station. And um, I think our job here it's very important for you know, scientists, for uh, people uh, who involved in our program. But uh, most important, in my opinion, it's uh, example how we can. Uh, work together, how we can to have fun together and uh, if people could see how we can have fun here they understood that in spite of uh, it's a dangerous place, radiation zero gravity, etc but uh, it's the most peaceful uh, place around the world because we live here very friendly uh, and uh, I wish uh, Shannon uh, to continue these traditions uh, and crew get together, work together and uh, I wish you successful of your mission. Thank you very much all ground team, uh, all MCCs, uh, Houston, Hansfield, Munich, Tsukuba, Moscow and uh, we appreciate your support during our mission and thank you very much uh, and uh, traditionally we have uh, handover key <laughs> from the station and i'm glad to hand over it to shannon thank you sergey it is um truly an honor and a privilege to accept command of the international space station um and the responsibility for this amazing orbiting laboratory that we have up here. Um, and, as you say, to carry on the traditions of international cooperation in space. Um, to the Soyuz MS-17 crew, um, Sergey, Sergey, Kate, <laughs> I just want to say, I'm, I know I'm speaking for everybody, thank you so much for such a wonderful time these past five months that we've had together. It's truly been the uh, teamwork and the camaraderie that has made it very special. Um, as we all know, Expedition 64 was incredibly busy. As you pointed out, we've done all kinds of research. I don't know how many EVAs between the two sides, um, multiple cargo vehicles. We've done station repairs, we've done station upgrades, we've done station maintenance. Um, and none of it would have been possible without the support of people on the ground, our families, uh, the instructors that got us ready, the control centers, the people that work there, um, and of course, all the researchers around the world whose work that we are carrying out up here. And in that vein, I'd actually like to give a special shout out to Kenny Todd, um, who's been the leader of the operational side um, many, many years in Houston. And we understand he's retiring at the end of the month. And so from everybody up here, we wish you uh, fair winds and following seas. You are going to be missed and your leadership is going to be missed. To the Soyuz MS-18 crew, Fyodor, where'd he go? There you are. Yeah. Mark, Alec, I know our time together is going to be relatively short, but I know that our crew and Expedition 64 is going to carry out wonderful things. And so, Sergey, finally, I'd like to wish you and your crew a safe journey home. I konechna, konechna, mwe zhulayom vui vam miaki psaiki. And with Shannon Walker offering a soft landing 
farewell greeting there yesterday to Sergei Ryzhikov, the Soyuz commander. We take a look at the three sections of the Soyuz spacecraft, the MS-17, that will be undocking from the International Space Station about three hours and 40 minutes from now. The three crew members will soon strap themselves into the center section called the descent module. That's the only section of the three compartment Soyuz vehicle that survives the heat of reentry for a parachute-assisted landing in Jezka, uh, southeast of the town of Jezkazgan in Kazakhstan. The top section, the orbital module, and the bottom section, the instrumentation and propulsion module where the engines and thrusters are, those three sections will pyrotechnically separate some 31 minutes after the deorbit burn. We'll get into that in just a moment. The timeline of events uh, as they will unfold uh, this evening call for hatch closure coming up about 15 minutes from now. The uh, Poisk module to which the Soyuz MS-17 is currently docked, uh, that hatch will be closed by Oleg Novitsky, who just arrived on the International Space Station a week ago, along with uh, Russian cosmonaut Pyotr Dubrov and NASA astronaut Mark Vandehei. On the Soyuz side, Ryzhikov, who will be seated in the center seat in the descent module for tonight's entry and landing, flanked on his left by flight engineer, board engineer number one, Sergei Kudzverchkov, and flight engineer or board engineer number two, Kate Rubens, on his right. They will close the hatch on the Soyuz side of the docking interface, conduct uh, leak checks, and then uh, ultimately will depressurize uh, the vestibule, the small passageway between Soyuz and the International Space Station to set the stage for the command that will open up hooks holding the Soyuz and uh, the um, Poisk module firmly together with physical separation and undocking scheduled at 8.34 p.m. Central Time, 9.34 p.m. Eastern Time. This will be the second undocking for the Soyuz MS-17 in recent weeks. Uh, Rubens, Ryzhikov, and Kudzverchkov departed the station briefly back on March 19th for a brief 35-minute relocation from the Rosviet module on the Earth-facing side of the Russian segment of the station to the Poisk module, where it currently is docked on the space-facing side. That opened up Rosviet for last Friday's arrival of Novitsky, Dubrov, and Vandehei on the Soyuz MS-18 that will be their home for the next several months. This is a jam-packed period an unprecedented period of activity in uh, station comings and goings. In the next, uh, we're in the middle of a three-week period, in fact, in which 14 astronauts and cosmonauts in four different spacecraft are either coming to or departing from the International Space Station. In fact, uh, some of that coming and going uh, activity involve, uh, involving astronauts and cosmonauts on the station continued to unfold earlier today on the launch and landing facility at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida with the arrival several hours ago of the four astronauts who will launch next Thursday, April 22nd, if all goes as planned, on a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket from launch pad 39A at the Cape. Uh, Shane Kimbrough, Megan MacArthur, Aki Hoshide, and Thomas Pesquet are all set uh, to blast off at 6.11 a.m. Eastern Time next Thursday uh, to begin a uh, one-day journey uh, to the International Space Station and a docking uh, to the forward port of the Harmony module of the International Outpost, uh, joining the other crew members who will be remaining on board. That will up the uh, crew complement on board the station from 7.00 which it will be after undocking of Rubens, Ryzhikov, and Kudzverchkov tonight to a total of 11 crew members on board the International Space Station. As mentioned uh, a moment ago, the um, 
Undocking of the Soyuz MS-17 from the International Space Station's Poisk module is scheduled for 8.34 p.m. Central Time tonight. There will be uh, two separation burns that will begin to uh, invoke an opening rate between the Soyuz and the International Space Station over the next couple of orbits after undocking. How do you copy At that point, uh, the deorbit burn will be initiated a four minute, 38 second retrograde firing of the Soyuz engines to slow the vehicle down by 128 meters per second, allowing it to begin uh, to drop out of orbit for its high speed entry back into the Earth's atmosphere. The deorbit burn is scheduled for 11.01 and 30 seconds p.m. Central Time tonight. Once the deorbit burn is complete, the crew will set up for module separation. Again, that pyrotechnic uh, activity that will separate the three sections of the Soyuz at 11.29 and 50 seconds p.m. Central Time this evening, just before uh, the Soyuz uh, enters the Earth's atmosphere at an altitude of 100 kilometers with the uh, heat shield uh, in the facing the direction of travel, repelling heat that will build up to about 2,500 degrees Fahrenheit around the spacecraft. Once uh, the Soyuz uh, enters the lower regime of the atmosphere, the command will be issued to open up its huge parachutes, first uh, drogue chutes and then the big main chute at an altitude of 10.7 kilometers at 11.41 p.m. Central Time tonight. And then it'll be a 15-minute uh, drift, if you will, under the, under the main chute for a landing uh, in a region southeast of the town of Jezkazgan, about 91 miles to the southeast of that town, at 11.56 and 24 seconds p.m. Central Time tonight, 12.56 a.m. Eastern Time on Saturday morning, and 10.56 a.m. Kazakhstan Time on Saturday morning, where the Russian Search and Recovery Forces and a team of NASA personnel will be waiting to begin uh, the extraction of the crew from uh, the Soyuz vehicle. They uh, will be flown by helicopters from uh, the landing site about a two-hour and 15-minute helicopter ride to the staging city of Karaganda uh, to the northeast of the landing site where the crew will split up with Kate Rubens boarding a NASA plane in Karaganda for her flight back to Houston. The two cosmonauts, Rizhikov and Kudzferchkov, will board a Gagarin Cosmonaut Training Center aircraft in Karaganda for the flight back to their training base in Star City, Russia, just outside of Moscow. 17.5.0.1 and 33.650. Parameters listed in the order of the form. Okay, copy all. Thank you. We are working per page 24. This uh, conversation uh, that you hear through interpretation is between flight controllers at the Russian Mission Control Center in Koryov. By the way, you're looking at a live view from a balcony camera overlooking the cavernous flight control room there just outside of Moscow. They will be in charge of tonight's uh, entry and landing operations to bring home Rubens Ryzhikov and Kudzferchkov and bring their 185-day mission to an end. We're just a few minutes away here from the point at which uh, we will have uh, television uh, from inside the International Space Station and the Poisk module as uh, the crew members on board the station who will be remaining following uh, undocking of the Soyuz MS-17 tonight say farewell to Rubens, Rizhikov, and Kudzferchkov and uh, the closure of the hatches that will begin uh, the procedures leading to the undocking of uh, their vehicle undocking again scheduled at 8.34 p.m. Central Time, 9.34 p.m. Eastern Time. Russian flight controllers have uploaded uh, all of the uh, information 
about uh, undocking and the entry profile into the uh, onboard computers on the Soyuz MS-17 spacecraft in preparation for uh, the final work that uh, the three crew members will do once they're inside the Soyuz and once they begin uh, their final uh, pre-undocking preparations that will include their donning of their Sokol launch and entry suits. At this hour, the International Space Station is flying 258 statute miles over the Indian Ocean in an orbit inclined 51.6 degrees to either side of the equator, moving from southwest to northeast, about to cross Indonesia on this particular orbit of the Earth. RSS. Space the ground one for Oleg. Uh, go ahead and space the ground one. Uh, are you receiving the image? Uh, is it okay? No, we are not receiving the image yet. We had a, We didn't have KU band for a long time, so currently we're waiting for it to come back. Okay. And now a view from a camera inside the uh, Poisk module, which now is also serving as a uh, airlock for Russian spacewalks. You can see a Russian Orlan spacesuit there on the right. Thank you very much. And uh, you're looking right into the hatchway of the uh, Soyuz MS-17, where Rubens, uh, Rizhikov, and Kudsverchkov will be moving in for hatch closure just a few minutes from now. Again, uh, following undocking that's uh, about three hours and 27 minutes from now, remaining on board the station to begin Expedition 65, which officially begins at the moment of undocking, is the uh, new station commander, Shannon Walker, who will uh, command the station until April 27th, when she hands over station command to Aki Hoshide of the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency once he arrives on board with his Crew 2 crewmates. That uh, launch again scheduled for April 22nd from the Kennedy Space Center and a docking to the station on April 23rd. Walker uh, will remain on board following tonight's undocking along with Mike Hopkins, uh, Mike Hopkins, Mark Vandehei, Victor Glover, Soichi Noguchi, Oleg Novitsky, and Piotr Dubrov. We should be uh, seeing uh, the crew members move into the field of view here in just a few minutes. Meanwhile, down in Kazakhstan, uh, the search and recovery forces are uh, in uh, the early morning hours on Saturday. It's about 4.07 a.m. local Kazakhstan time in uh, the town of Jezkazgan. The uh, search and recovery forces and embedded NASA personnel uh, should be waking up uh, a short time from now. They flew on an Antonov uh, military transport plane from Karaganda to Jezkazgan in the early morning hours on Friday to pre-position. That's where a dozen Russian Mi-8 helicopters and other uh, support vehicles are located, not just at the landing site, but at the Jezkazgan airport. The uh, search and recovery force uh, members will be boarding those helicopters within the next several hours to fly about 35 minutes in sequential fashion from Jezkazgan to the landing site, arriving uh, and forming a circular uh, flight pattern around the landing zone to await the arrival of the Soyuz MS-17 spacecraft under its parachute.
once uh, the landing uh, takes place, uh, teams of technicians uh, will uh, begin the process of opening the hatch to the Soyuz and extracting the crew members one by one. They'll be placed in uh, chairs alongside of their spacecraft for a few minutes uh, to get their land legs back after a half a year in uh, zero G before they're carried into a nearby inflatable medical tent for initial medical testing prior to the time that they're uh, brought to individual helicopters for a two hour, 15 minute flight back to Karaganda where they will uh, split up, as we mentioned a moment ago, Rubens returning to Houston on a NASA plane and the two cosmonauts returning to Star City, Russia on a Gagarin Cosmonaut Training Center aircraft. As we mentioned, uh, we're in the midst of an unprecedented uh, period of activity on board the station uh, with four different vehicles bringing and transporting crew members to and from the complex. You can see here the, uh, the con current configuration of all the various vehicles, both uh, human-rated vehicles and unmanned uh, cargo craft, uh, two progress vehicles, uh, Russian uh, cargo vehicles, the Northrop Grumman Cygnus 15 spacecraft and then uh, the Soyuz MS-17 currently docked uh, to the Poisk module, but not for long, and the Soyuz MS-18 that just arrived a week ago that will remain uh, at the uh, Rosviet module on the Earth-facing side of the station for the next several months. The Crew-1 Dragon that you see on the left side of your screen is docked uh, to an international docking adapter on the uh, space facing or zenith side of the Harmony module. The forward port on Harmony is open at the moment, but not for long. It will be occupied uh, next week by the Crew 2 Dragon spacecraft carrying Shane Kimbrough, Megan MacArthur, Aki Hoshide, and Thomas Pesquet to the International Laboratory. And you see, uh, or saw just a second ago, Oleg Novitsky, uh, the Roscosmos cosmonaut who arrived on the station a week ago, and there he is again, as he uh, prepares the Poisk module uh, for the uh, farewell and uh, hatch closure of his crewmates. Each uh, Soyuz commander selects a call sign for uh, the vehicle that they're flying from launch to docking and undocking to landing. The MS-17 for Rizhikov uh, will be under the call sign of Favor. That's a mountain in Russia that uh, is a favorite uh, place uh, that Rizhikov holds near and dear to his heart. So you will be hearing uh, calls from the Russian flight controllers to Rizhikov once the crew is inside the vehicle. Uh, they'll be calling Favor uh, throughout the course of undocking, the back away from the station, and uh, all of the events associated with entry and landing this evening.
The uh, weather forecast for landing several hours from now for the uh, Soyuz MS-17 and its three crewmates is uh, excellent tonight. The, uh, the low pressure system uh, moved through southern Kazakhstan uh, about 24 hours ago and should uh, have left in its wake clear skies, visibility of six plus miles, variable winds, and temperatures around 64 degrees Fahrenheit for the landing that occurs uh, just about four and a half hours after local sunrise. After uh, the hatch is closed uh, to the Soyuz spacecraft, uh, the uh, three departing crew members, Rubens, Rizhikov, and Kud Sverchkov, will uh, again uh, perform uh, the typical vestibule leak checks right at the docking interface uh, between uh, the Soyuz and the Poisk module to which it is currently linked. They then will uh, climb into their Sokol launch and entry suits and conduct those leak checks on those suits to make sure that they're ready to go for uh, tonight's entry and landing. Uh, they will conduct a, a quick review of the sequence of events and all of the data associated with their descent uh, back into the Earth's atmosphere with flight controllers of the Russian Mission Control Center before approval is given to initiate the commanding to open up the hooks holding the Soyuz to Poisk. This view uh, from an external camera on the International Space Station uh, showing the uh, Soyuz MS-17 that is uh, preparing to undock about three hours and 16 minutes or so from now. The uh, International Space Station is flying into an orbital sunrise just south of Japan. The uh, Poisk module that uh, you're seeing right now uh, with the uh, Russian Orlan spacesuit on the right side of your screen, another suit on the left side of your screen, that uh, was used for the first time as an airlock for a Russian-based spacewalk by Rizhikov and Kud Sverchkov back in November, just about five weeks after they arrived on board. Poisk uh, will continue to be used as an airlock for Russian-based spacewalks, as well as a docking port for Russian, Russian visiting vehicles. As uh, the Russians uh, await the launch later this year of the Nauka multi-purpose laboratory module on a proton rocket from the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan. That big laboratory module will be delivered uh, to the station 
for a docking to the same port that is currently occupied by the pier's docking compartment. And there's Ryzhikov with uh, Oleg Novitsky as they uh, prepare to enter the Soyuz. Kate Rubin's now in the field of view. And Sergei Kudzverchkov. Okay, guys, this is it. Okay. Mission Control Moscow, energy, uh, space to ground two. Uh, go ahead, Oleg, energy two. Well, as you can see, the crew is entering Ingress and Soyuz. Yes, we can see that. The uh, three departing crew members inside the uh, Soyuz MS-17. Oh, copy and space the ground, too. Uh, copy loud and clear, Oleg. How me? I can copy loud and clear. Yes, you are correct. Okay. We have a request. Inaudible. Yes, of course. Don't forget the cap. Yes, right away. Yes, he is watching. Copy, thank you. Give it to me. Almost. Copy. Well, can see some fingerprints on the surface. Now the crew is inspecting the surface. We copy all. In the lower right-hand corner, uh, the uh, new station commander, Shannon Walker of NASA, watching as Novitsky and Ryzhikov wipe down the uh, circumference of the hatch surfaces on either side of the docking interface. This, uh, in preparation for the closing of the hatch, and the initiation of leak checks, the first step on the road home for Rubens Ryzhikov and Kuds Verchkov. Okay, uh, we wipe the uh, rings 
of the uh, surfaces, the mating surfaces, copio. Oleg, you go to close. Okay, copy. Uh, stand by one. Okay, good luck, guys. And with that, the Soyuz hatch closed at 5.24 p.m. Central Time, 6.24 p.m. Eastern Time. The hatches are closed. It's copy. The uh, poise catch now closed at 5.25 p.m. So both hatches are now closed. That will uh, kick off uh, the series of procedures over the next uh, hour or so to conduct leak checks, make sure we have an airtight seal at the docking interface as uh, the three departing crew members begin to suit up in their Russian Sokol launch and entry suits. No, it's time to catch some rest. Oleg, you are going to turn off the cameras and stow it back in place. Moscow, did you call in space the ground to... Yes, you are going to turn off camera. Okay, copy, turning off the camera. Good copy. Okay. But so cover is closed. Uh, work for page twenty-eight. Copy. Uh, this is Mission Control Houston. Uh, once again, uh, three of the uh, crew members who have called uh, the International Space Station home for the past 185 days are now uh, just hours away from uh, departing their orbital complex. Kate Rubens of NASA and Roscosmos cosmonaut Sergei Rizhikov, the Soyuz MS-17 commander, and Sergei Kudzverchkov are nestled inside the uh, Soyuz MS-17, having said farewell to their station crewmates as they begin preparations uh, for leak checks, vestibule pressure checks, and eventually the undocking that will take them away from the station for a landing this evening, late this evening, just before midnight central time on the steppe of Kazakhstan to wrap up a uh, 78.4 million mile mission. With that, let's take a look at uh, the rest of the night's coverage. We'll be back on the air at 8.15 p.m. central time with our undocking coverage, the physical separation uh, between uh, the vehicles, between the Soyuz and the station, is scheduled for 8.34 p.m. central. We'll uh, 
complete our coverage for the night with uh, deorbit burn and landing coverage at 10.30 p.m. Central Time. The deorbit burn is scheduled at 11.01 .01 p.m. and touchdown on the steppe of Kazakhstan just to the southeast of the remote town of Jezkazgan scheduled at 11.56 p.m. Central Time which will be 10.56 a.m. Kazakhstan time on Saturday morning. There'll be a video file wrapping up all of the day's activities in the early morning hours on NASA TV on Saturday. So everything is uh, going by the book so far in the early stages of the return to Earth later tonight for Kate Rubens, Sergei Rizhikov, and Sergei Kudsverchkov. Uh, we will be back with you on NASA TV in about uh, two hours and 45 minutes at 8.15 p.m. Central Time, 9.15 p.m. Eastern Time with the undocking of Soyuz MS-17. Until then, this is Mission Control Houston.